Hello guys, today we are going to see four ways of closing our flaps to avoid bone dehiscence and bone graft exposure. Let's go for it. Hello guys, I am Juan Lara from DL Oral Surgery and with my partner in crime, Jose Luis Montpel, we are going to see today four ways of doing our closing of the flap to avoid bone graft exposures. The first one is releasing the periosteum from the back of flap. How are we going to do this? Like 8 to 10 millimeters and then under the mucogingival junction in the inside of the flap, we are going to perform a really small incision from side to side and we are going to detach that periosteum from the mucosal flap. That will lead to have more soft tissue to cover our bone graft and avoid the frightening wound distance. But what happens if when doing this releasing maneuver of the periosteum, we cannot have a free tension closure? What can we do? When we're working in the maxilla, we can do a rotated palatal flap. Depending on what area we are working on, we can do an anterior rotated flap or a posterior rotated flap. That way, we can have a two-layer closure. Just in case we have a wound dehiscence of the mucosa, we will find a second layer of that connective tissue that will prevent the bone from exposing to the oral cavity, contaminating and leading to a total or at least partial loss of the graft. Third way is performing a fun of vestibule approach. What is that? That is, instead of using a crystal approach that sometimes can lead to bone graft exposure, we are going to have our incision far away from the site that we are going to reconstruct. And we are going to perform an incision in the front of the vestibule and raise a flap from there to the crystal part. Once we have done this, we are going to reconstruct all the site, all the area we want to reconstruct. As you know, we prefer using grid technique or split bone block technique and we are going to reconstruct all that site. Once we have finished our reconstruction, we just have to suture the incision, which is, again, far away from the reconstruction. So all the tension of soft tissue is going to be in another side, away from the reconstructing area. And the fourth way of avoiding bone dehiscence and bone exposure, it's in our opinion, when doing vertical augmentation, the safest and most predictable one. And this is a tunnel approach. Tunnel approach is not new. It was developed by Kent in 1983 and Rothstein in 84. And it's been used by several authors during all these years. We like to say that everything is based on doing a subperiosteal tunnel, which will lead to an intact periosteum. So tunnel approach has two big advantages. First of all, we have no incisions over the crest. This is important when going vertical. Why? Because as long as we have no incisions on the reconstructed area, the wound dehiscence risk is almost zero. And the second big advantage of the tunnel approach is that having no incisions over the grafted area keeps the periosteum intact. And keeping the periosteum intact will lead to having intact its osteogenic capacity. This will fasten the uh, vascularization process. So keep in mind that when going vertical, tunnel approach should be considered as your first option. Okay guys, hope you have liked this video, comment or ask us any question you have. And remember, as we always say, the scalper on your hand, but the prosthesis work on your mind. See you soon.